back to Bell's Library. I'm Heather, and today we are going to continue with the Enneagram Readathon mini series I have going on right now. Basically, we're going to take one of the prompts from the Enneagram Readathon. We are going to read a book and do a reading vlog for that prompt. And then we are going to also maybe do some other Enneagram fun as well. Um, I actually think I have a really fun activity planned, and I'm hoping it kind of turns out it's a little something different than what I usually do on this channel, but I'm hoping you guys enjoy it. But before we get into all of that goodness, please subscribe if you are new here. And also I have Instagram and Goodreads down below for you guys. So you can check me out over there and we can chit chat on all of these lovely platforms. So let's go ahead and talk about what prompt and book we are going to be reading for this episode. So one of the prompts for the Enneagram 2 team that I am on is to read a sequel. Um, so basically you can't really like read a the first book in the series, but any sequels from there, second book, last book, whatever. So for this one, I originally was planning on reading Actor Age Eve Brown, but I went to check on my Libby app and I was like, wait, where did it go? And I, I don't know, I guess my hold must have expired and I didn't realize or something, I don't know. So I had to put it back on hold and now it's saying it's going to be like eight weeks. And I'm like, ah! So I had to change this one up, but I'm still going to be reading a romance. It's just going to be a fantasy romance. So we are going to read Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. I recently read the first one in here, which is Daughter of the Pirate King and really enjoyed it. Um, and so I actually have a vlog where I read a bunch of books that were set at sea, kind of had some pirate vibes happening to them. And so you can check that out. I'll definitely have it linked for you guys up top down below all that good stuff. So you can see how the first one went, but we're going to continue. It's a duology. So this is the second and last book in this series. And I am dying to continue into it. I actually have started it. I think I'm like pretty far into it. I think I'm at like probably 40% into the book at this point. Um, I forgot to check before I got on here, but I know I'm past a third. So I'm, I'm probably around 40% into the book. And it's an audiobook that I'm listening to and it's pretty short. I think it's like eight hours or nine hours. So it shouldn't take me long to get through this one. So I'll give you a brief synopsis of the first one and where we're kind of at with the series, but we are following Alosa and she's the daughter of the Pirate King and also the Siren Queen. And she ends up getting captured by this um, rival pirate's ship and um, she means for it to happen basically and is taken prisoner, but she's got like so many tricks up her sleeve and she is really on that boat because she wants to find a piece of this treasure map so that they can go find um, this treasure that is on the island of the sirens or something. I can't remember the actual name of the island, but um, she's trying to collect this for her dad, who's the pirate king. And I really just had so much fun following the adventure. Elosa is creative and she's spunky and she's just got like so many different tricks up her sleeve to do this, that, and the other. And she's like, yeah, sure, you have me prisoner. But also the first mate, Raiden, and her like butt heads but also they kind of like totally like each other they're just like we can't like each other you're my prisoner and you're the first mate on this ship that i'm trying to steal from and they're just like oh my gosh their banter was so cute though and it was just like adored the romance that's kind of creeping in between the two of them and this just like hate to love type thing i don't know it just it was super 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 adorable so now we're getting into the next book and we are trying to go after this treasure and um i feel like i really enjoyed the first one and i can't remember if it took a little bit until i kind of got to that point but in this one i'm not enjoying it quite as much because i just i i feel like i want a little more romance going between alosa and raiden and there's a little bit but it's a lot of them just like pulling back from each other and being like no i can't like you like you're the enemy um and i'm just ready for them to just like come on, let's just get over that and just know. Because everybody else on Elosa's crew, and now that they're on her boat, like, they all know that the two of them like each other, and they're like, come on, let's just do this thing, and the two of them are just being total pains in the butts, and I'm just like, you guys are killing me right now. So I do feel like I'm a little frustrated with the romance, but I'm enjoying the overall storyline. I'm curious as to how 
the Siren Queen and her mom's going to kind of fit into the story. Um, we've had a little bit of mention there, but not a ton. So I'm kind of curious as to how that's going to all work out. And um, yeah, overall, I'm enjoying it. Maybe not as much as the first one so far, but again, we are getting into there and I feel like, you know, it's going to have some fun adventures here really soon. And I feel like some of the relationship entanglements are going to get a lot trickier really soon between like Alosa and her mom and her dad. And um, I'm sure that the romance will come soon. So I just got to I just got to keep tracking. So having said that, I know that this is going to be kind of a quick book. So I actually already found some really fun Enneagram 2 stuff that we're going to go ahead and do now. So basically I looked up some different ways that you could dress like an Enneagram too. And so I found a couple different graphics. Um, this first one is just like one outfit kind of thing. So it says type twos and they say comfy t-shirt and a skirt with pockets, which I do not have a skirt with pockets. So that gets a little tricky. Definitely comfy t-shirts I'm down with, yes. Um, also a hair tie on the arm at all times. If you watch me in my videos, I'm always like, shoot, I forgot to take off my hair tie, but I literally always have my hair tie on my hand because whenever I don't have a hair tie with me is the one time that I'm like, I'm so hot. I need to put my hair up and then I don't have a hair tie and I'm like, ah, seriously, <laughs> or I need a hair tie for something. So my hair doesn't get into whatever. I don't know what I'm doing, but every time I don't have it, I need it. So it's just, it's like always there. Um, and then it says any excuse to wear open toe shoes. I definitely am much more of a hot weather gal and um, open toe shoes sounds great. But also boots are stinking adorable. So I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on that one. Love sandals. I love heels. I love wedges. I love boots. Um, I love flats, like certain flats. I'm a little pickier in that area um, and I don't wear them as often. Usually like winter I'm wearing boots and summer I'm wearing sandals and that's like mostly what I've got going on and then I like to wear heels and wedges. I just don't wear them a ton because I don't really dress up for anything. <laughs> I don't really go anywhere. I'm an at-home mom and a student at the moment and I'm in nursing school so I wear tennis shoes when I'm doing a lot of that stuff. So I don't get to wear that stuff a lot but I do love it and I have so many heels and I'm just I'm addicted to shoes anyways. That's a totally another topic. So that was a really fun one that I found. So then I also found this other one. It says Jackie's type two style tendencies. And so we've got flattering fits. I mean, who doesn't want to wear a flattering fit, right? And we've got group fitness ready and we have versatile pieces. And so I figured we could try out a few outfits in each of these areas and see what I've kind of got and what I would choose for some of this stuff. So I'm going to set that up and we're going to chit chat about all of these. Okay. So I'm a little nervous about doing this, but this, we'll just talk about the outfit that I have on because I feel like this kind of fits into a little bit of flattering, but also like versatile. So I have on right now, just like a comfy t-shirt that is in leopard print and some high-waisted shorts, and then just a cute little belt to kind of add some style to it but it's such an easy outfit to throw on and I feel like when it comes to flattering the higher waisted shorts and pants on someone who isn't in their teens or young 20s anymore I feel like that just kind of helps to slim the waistline a little bit and then the comfy t-shirt is just like it's so light and nice and this leopard print as much as it's like maybe a bolder print you have to think like Leopard print has black and brown and tan and like a lot of neutral colors. So you can pair it with more things than you would think. You can pair it with all your browns and all your blacks and your denims. And it just kind of, it's a very versatile print to be quite honest and can go with a lot of stuff. Um, and then also just having that t-shirt vibe does make it a little more flattering because it's not super tight fitting, but then adding it with a tuck and like a belt you're just still getting a little bit more style with it. So this is something that I really enjoy just being comfortable, but then I still do have a little bit of a stylish look happening as well. Um, and of course I still have my little hair tie because you just got to have a hair tie. Okay guys, you just, you just have to, it's a thing. So 
let's go ahead and I'll move into my other more versatile outfit. Okay, so another thing that I was thinking about that's kind of versatile is like a nice black blouse like this because I feel like with something like this, you can wear it with shorts like this and it's just, it's kind of cute. It's a little more casual. I can wear it, um, you know, to whatever event I may be doing with family and it's it still looks nice, but it's also just comfy and casual and this material is super light and so it doesn't get super warm and then the cute mesh on the top just kind of like gives it a little character it's got this cute little gold embellishment so also i can really dress this up a little bit more professionally and nicely as well so i'll show you that real fast so another way you can kind of dress this up a little bit more for maybe going into work or the office is by putting it with a pair of nice slacks i like to pair like black in like solid colors with colorful bottoms and pants. I think that that's really nice compared to wearing black pants all the time and then something more colorful on the top. I also, I am a little bit more, uh, I need more flattering around my stomach. That's where I hold a lot of my weight. So having a flowier top and some pants that maybe are a little bit more snug works for me. So I like to have my, my colored slacks happening and then something flowy and black on top. Um, but like you literally could wear this out to the office and then you can throw on some shorts or jeans or whatever afterwards and go to your family cookout and you've got just such a versatile top. So kind of moving back to the idea of wearing something flattering. Um, I think that dresses in general can be very flattering on the figure. And for me, I'm kind of more that apple body type. So my arms and my legs tend to be kind of thinner and those are kind of where I like to show off. My shoulders are good, but my stomach and my love handles are kind of my area that I'm not going to accentuate as much. And so I really enjoy like tops and dresses that have the um, style that kind of shows off my shoulders a little bit nicer because I'm going to be showing off an aspect of my body that does look nice. And then I can show off my legs because I do have nice legs, but the flowiness around the midsection helps to hide some of that extra chunk that I've got going on. Um, for lack of better words, um, please realize that I am doing this, but I really just like don't need any uh, comments on any of that. Um, and this is just my style and what I like to wear and what I feel comfortable in. So um, I find that these tend to be a little bit more flattering and a little bit more flowy around the areas that I need it to be more flattering. And then I can show off areas that are a little bit nicer for me. So dresses, awesome for versatility. I think that's a really great way to um, have some versatility because I also, well, we were talking about flattering, but Dresses can be very flattering and they can also honestly be very versatile too. I can dress this up and wear it to a really nice wedding or party or something, but I also can just wear it to the park and around town and just be like a little more cash with it too. So there you go. Okay, so here is another dress. And again, this shows off some of my shoulders and it has pockets. So I thought this one is probably the closest to the graphic that just has the one girl. I, again, don't have skirts, but this is a dress. It has pockets and I feel like it's just really comfortable and I adore this dress. Um, I really like the buttons that kind of go down the front. I think it's a really cute touch and a little tie. So this is definitely one of my favorite dresses. And yeah, having the pockets definitely kind of bumps it up there in one of my favorites. So um, also can definitely wear those open-toed shoes that Enneagram 2s really like with this one. And I have my hair tie on. And so this is kind of working for said graphic where um, we have our lovely lady in the skirt. This is gonna be my rendition of that. So the last thing was group workout fitness type stuff going on. And so I've got a couple of my favorite workout outfits. Definitely the hair tie is gonna be in the hair if I'm working out. Um, I do work out pretty consistently. And so I really enjoy wearing stretchy leggings and I like them to be kind of higher waisted. So I'm not constantly feeling like they're falling down on me or um, things are showing that shouldn't be showing. I also, again, enjoy that kind of colorful bottoms with that neutral top. 
So I think that that's really cute. And this one has a nice open back, which kind of gives it a little something different with the racer back. And it's just, it's comfortable and light and easy to move around in. And I'm not worried about anything showing anywhere <laughs> or falling. Um, everything's tucked into place where it should be. So this is one of the outfits that I really enjoy wearing. All right, and then another, again, dark black top, very neutral there, the racer back. Um, and then I also have on some fun leggings. These are honestly one of my favorite workout leggings. I think they're so stinking cute. Pretty sure I found them at Ross. Ross, I feel like has a ton of really great workout leggings and workout materials. Um, so I definitely would check them out if you have one near you. But um, here is my next workout type outfit. Um, so I think that's going to be it as far as what I've got for you for dressing like an Enneagram 2. Um, and I will update you guys soon when I'm a little farther into the book. Hey guys, I am back because I finished up Daughter of the Siren Queen this morning. Um, I went grocery shopping and listened during my trip and here we are. I'm done. So this one I definitely feel like I um, picked up a little bit more and I enjoyed a little bit more towards the second half of the book. Um, There's a lot more like action I feel like in this one and we had a lot more like battling going on. Um, There's a little more intrigue between um, some of the relationships with Alosa and her mom and Alosa and her dad and some of that kind of turmoil. But I also feel like because we had that, I feel like the stakes could have been a lot higher with a lot of those moments and they just weren't. Like Alosa just accepted things so easily, I felt like. Um, so I was kind of like a little, so I was like a little bit bummed about how that was kind of handled. I feel like um, definitely could have been a little bit more tension there and a little bit more reluctance from her. So also we have Raiden and Alosa's relationship, which did get a little bit more romantic as the book went on, which I am glad for. Um, but it just was too much of the, like, I can't love you moment. Like, I was ready for that to kind of be over. So I'm glad that it did end up kind of wrapping up and getting going. Um, but I definitely still wish I could have had a little bit more there. So Overall, like, I think that the book's really fun. I think it's a great, like, kind of pirate set at sea fun adventure. Um, we're out looking for, you know, treasure and on a pirate ship. And I feel like the atmosphere was really fun um, and everything like that. I just feel like I, I lost my connection to some of the characters. And um, some, some of those deep emotions that I feel like should have been there just weren't fully there. I also feel like Alosa, she kind of lost a little bit of her spunk in this book, which was one of my favorite things about the first book in the series. I feel like she was just like always coming up with some new <laughs> trick and I'd just be like, what the heck? You are like, she was so clever. And I feel like she lost a little bit of that in this book. And I, I'm just kind of disappointed that that happened. So overall, like, I enjoyed reading it. It was good. It was fun. Um, I definitely enjoyed the first book quite a bit more than this one, and I think I'm going to give this one a three star. Actually, I run it, ran it through Copile, which is like a rating system um, from Book Roast channel, and it came out of a three star because I really was kind of like debating where I felt like this was going to go. So I felt like that was really going to help me kind of work through it all. And after running through there, three stars is what it came out to. I think it's probably towards the higher end. I was thinking about giving it a four, but um, I just, I did have some moments where I was just like, I want more <laughs> going on here. Like it's just not giving me everything that I want from this book that I got from the first book. So that's kind of how that one went. And uh, we're going to close out this vlog and stick around um, because there will be more coming your way. I'm pretty sure we should have at least five videos in this series, if not six. So definitely um, either on the next screen, I will make sure to link the next video if it's out. If it's not out yet, then you will see it very soon. So make sure to subscribe. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.